making a butterfly and we're going to be using a variety of materials to make this butterfly. Um, we are going to be using a technique that requires some folding and symmetry and this project was inspired by Cassie Stevens. I will make sure to link that in the description box and maybe right above here as well. So feel free to go check out her original video. But, uh, let's get started. For this project, you're going to want a large white piece of paper, something that is thick and can be painted on. Um, you're going to want black paint. Um, you can use temper paint or acrylic paint or whatever you want. You could also use a bingo dauber filled with ink, which is what I'm going to use. You are also going to want some sort of coloring material, whether it's watercolor, chalk, or crayons, color pencils, something that we can color a butterfly in with later. All right, let's get started. First of all, you want to make sure that your piece of paper is folded in half perfectly. So you want to make sure you've lined up the edges and that you've really made sure you made a good crease on it, okay? Now, when you open this up, you are going to get started by taking your either bingo dauber or your paint. Some, it does have to be something that's liquidy and you're going to start near the top and we're going to draw a curve shape for the head immediately flip your paper over and rub it together. We have to move quickly to make sure that it will transfer our print before it dries up, which is why working with paint might be a little bit easier because it won't dry as quickly as my ink, but I also want this to dry quickly so that I can move on to my next step when I'm done. Now I'm gonna do the body. adding just a little curve to it. If you don't like it um, hollow in the middle, you could color it in with your black as well. Um, next, I'm going to draw a line that goes out diagonally. Fold it over, rub it in place so I can get the transfer effect. Then I'm gonna do one going out in the middle this way. And transfer it over. Lastly, I'm going to do one that's sort of a low diagonal. And get my last transferred line. Now I'm going to, from this line up here at the top to the lower center one, I'm going to do sort of a wavy line. Doesn't matter what shape it is, as long as it's wavy. And then immediately fold and rub over. Lastly, I'm going to connect this space to this space down here. And again, it could be straight, it could be wavy, whatever you want it to be. And now I have a match again. Now if you're using very liquidy paint, this will probably be very dark just like the other side will be. Um, but if it's textured like this, you have a couple options. You can leave it as it is, or now that we can see our lines, we can trace over the line again using your brush or your bingo dauber in my case. And we'll have an exact replica of the other side still. Next, we need an antenna. So I'm gonna, from the top of the head, just do a wavy line going out. Make my print and fix it if need be. I have my butterfly body and I have a couple options at this point. I can either just stop what I'm doing and start painting or coloring and finishing up my butterfly or I could do what I'm about to do now and that is break up my butterfly wings with some patterns. A lot of butterflies have patterns and different designs and lines in here. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. I'm just gonna start doing it and whenever I make a line, I'm going to flip my paper over and long before you make prints um, they will dry up and you won't be able to do the printing part so it's important that you constantly are flipping your paper every time you make a line so that they will connect spread out more than I thought it was going to. That's kind of cool though. That was an accident, but I kind of like it. So sometimes accidents happen. Um, 
things that we didn't anticipate um, cause our design to look a little bit different or change, but that's okay because it's kind of part of the nature of printmaking. And I actually really like it that there's a thicker part there. I think it looks really cool. So um, decide if there's anything else that you need to do. I'm trying not to fill it with too many lines because I want to have on the white section so I can still paint or color in. Um, but I did want to make sure I had some amount that looked like lines and patterns inside the wings. All right, we're now ready to add our color. So I'm choosing to use watercolors paint in my design and I'm going to be using a brush and water as well. You however can choose whatever you want. It really depends on what you used to make your butterfly. Um, I used ink which is permanent so when I put water on it it will not spread or bleed anywhere but if you use something else like temper paint it might bleed and spread all over the place. Acrylic would stay in place so it really depends on what material you used. Um, also so if you don't want to use paint or you don't have paint, you can use chalk, uh, colorful, beautiful chalk and blend it together. You can use oil pastel, crayon, color pencil, really anything that your heart desires. So I'm going to just dive in and start painting some of my wings and I'm going to be thinking of a color theme that I want to go with. So I want to decide that uh, what colors I think would look good together and how I want to group them together. I think in this particular example, I'm going to do a cool color butterfly, but uh, feel free to add, you know, splash some colors or use whatever color scheme that you think would look good. I'm going to take my brush and dip and drip it into my paint colors. What I'm doing is getting water on my brush and I'm dipping it into the colors that I intend on using. And um, this way it helps get them soft and ready to go. And I don't need to worry about um, sitting there and switch stirring for a really long time. It just kind of gets it all going. So this is a really good idea to do if you are trying to get yourself ready to go without wasting too much time. Okay, now I'm ready to dive in. Let me show you how you can make some beautiful color blends just using your watercolors. So I'm gonna take some of my blue first and down here on the bottom, I'm going to just lay some blue paint down in the first wing space. And somewhere maybe halfway through, I'm going to rinse my brush off, drop it into a second color, this time green, and I'm going to put it on here as well. And I'm going to let them overlap and blend right in the middle and kind of bleed together. Um, this step has to be done when the other color is still wet so that it will sort of bleed from one color to another color. If you want to do a faded effect, that is how you do it. Add one color down halfway, do the other color halfway, overlap right in the middle where they're both still wet. Another cool technique you can try is laying down a wet color and then cleaning your brush off and then immediately dipping it into another color and just dropping it on top and letting them sort of bleed together naturally. If you ever think you got too much uh, paint in one space, you can do one or two things. You can either share it, maybe put it on the other side and use it somewhere else. So that's one good way to solve the too much paint issue because maybe it's something that you're going to want or need somewhere else anyway. The solution is to take some paper towel and just dab it. So push down, lift up, push down, lift up. Um, that is going to soak up some of it. You never ever want to take this and just rub with it because it will just make a mess. So I'm just pushing down and lifting up gently and that will make it a lot lighter and less muddy looking, but it won't ruin what I've done. All right, I'm gonna just continue filling in my butterfly with a variety of colors and different color schemes, and then we'll again see how it all came out.
right, here's my finished watercolor butterfly. Um, I really enjoyed playing around with doing two colors inside each space. I thought that made it look a little bit more like stained glass almost. Um, it was just a fun effect that I enjoyed working with. But like I said, feel free to, instead of using watercolors, maybe trying color pencils, crayons, oil pastels, chalk, any number of things. And I hope you guys had fun making this with me. Uh, I cannot wait to see what butterfly shapes you came up with, what patterns, what colors, and what materials you decided to use. Have fun!